this year. Paul Nitsa could present it. Clark Clifford could present it. The service secretaries could appear, or I could do it. Uh, it would be hard for Paul to do it if I were gone and Clark were here for two reasons. A, he ought to be here when Clark's here so he can help him get adjusted. B, Paul's only been in the job six months and really uh, wasn't at the heart of the budget preparation or defense structure preparation. My reaction, Bob, is twofold. One, my personal reaction from my standpoint and the country's standpoint is that uh, you ought to do it. Second, I have some hesitancy because of what one or two of them have indicated to me that it, it uh, might be a little blood for you. Now, I know you don't give a damn, but I do. I wanted to pursue that further. Now, one of the men in talking to me about Clifford yeah. said that uh, uh, he just didn't think we could have a finer record and a better man there. But he said, now, that I think it'd be better. McNamara's indicated he wants to present this statement, and I think it'd be better that if he didn't, because you'll get in some arguments and you get cut up, and he's in perfect shape now, and what I do is take the information he has, and after Clifford gets confirmed, let us come along here, and while he will be new, uh, he can take bring secretaries with him, and he can uh, get through it, and I think that uh, you, you, won't have, you won't hurt him, and you won't hurt McNamara. Now, I had rather you do it, because uh, whatever arguments got to go on, I think first you can take them on better, you know more about it, and so forth. On the other hand, I don't want to ask you to go get your arm right. just before you right. leave. The answer is then, on that basis, I definitely should do it. Uh, I sensed a little uncertainty in your mind, both when we talked last week and also... Well, frankly, I don't want to decide at this second, but the reason I did is Russell told me, yeah. said, now, McNamara, I know how much you think of him and uh, like him and so forth. I told him you were going to yeah. finish up yeah. there, and I, when I, I wanted to wait a little bit yeah. to Clifford to get in, I thought it's better for you to do it. He said, that's wrong. He said, I think it, uh, he'll get cut up, yeah. and you oughtn't to do that now. That he's leaving, and I, I said, well, let me talk to you about it later. That's I, great. I, yeah. I would be badly cut up by McClellan on EF-111B, and God damn it, I'm just not going to do that. And uh, I've been trying to figure a way out of that portion of it. I know that would be a serious problem, and I'm just, I just can't take it psychologically at this point, and I'd be God damned if I'm going to take it. So I've got a way out. <laughs> and it's, it's the, some of uh, Russell's uh, committee members objected to holding the two hearings together. McClellan's on the Subcommittee for Defense Appropriations, but not on the Armed Services Committee. I with a little, I gave them a little uh, assist in this, and they have overridden Russell's desire to hold a joint hearing. And at the moment, he's, by this pressure from his committee members, been forced into agreeing to hold separate hearings. The Armed Services Committee hearing, of course, would come first. The appropriations in the Senate would, would follow by weeks, normally even a couple of months. I would not plan myself to handle the appropriations hearing. McClellan would turn it into an absolute inquisition of the worst possible kind. It was bad enough last year, and it'd be far worse this year. And uh, it, it's really a personal vendetta by him against me, and there's no, no reason why we have to take it, or will my successor be exposed to it? So that part I could put aside. Apart from that being cut up, the rest of it is, is just routine to me. I don't care. I can handle it, and I really think, quite frankly, it, it's the only way to do it. Let me call you back sure. after I check with the, him. The, the, reason I, the only reason for my call to bother you at the moment is that I haven't said a word to Rivers or Mahon, yeah. and I don't want to until you decide what you want me well, to do. Now, when is this supposed to take place? Well, normally it would start uh, next week, roughly a, a day or two after your budget message goes up, and that would be, let's say, just Thursday. Russell's ready to start on Thursday, and I would be prepared to start on Thursday if, if you want me to. If you don't want me to, uh, we'll make some other arrangements, and the, there would be some delay because others would have to take time to get prepared. But I've got, I've got all the work in, I think, damn good shape uh, with this coming, going to press tonight and being off the press in the morning in classified form. The next step is to get an unclassified version of it, about 180 pages long. We'll have that by Monday or Tuesday next week, and then everything's done as far as putting on paper the program, the thoughts, the justification, and so on. I think that I'll call you back shortly, but uh, sometime this morning. But I I think that uh, 
my, uh, th that's my feeling, unless I change, unless I, it does create more of a problem, and I hope it will, that's the way we'll go. My strong uh, recommendation. Uh, the, the next thing, I think you ought to try to see that the armed services are fully briefed. Their statements are awfully wild on this other thing, uh -huh. and I don't know how much you know. I'm rather disappointed we don't know more, and I don't quite understand this fellow's action, and I was concerned with all the radio reports this morning. He called for help, and we wouldn't respond, although we had airplanes a half an hour from from there now. That's Russell and folks like that. We, we got, I think we've got that turned around. The newspapers this morning are very good, Mr. President, okay. and the radio reports I heard at 7 o'clock were good. Uh, the, uh, we turned it around last night. You called Walt, and Walt called me about 8.30, and we had it turned around in half an hour after that on the AP. It was the AP uh, wire that caused the initial problem, and the reporter here got the information in the Pentagon. I think he got it right, but in any case, he wrote it wrong. And whether we gave it to him wrong or he misunderstood it, we changed it within half an hour. Mm. And I think we're all right on that. Well, now, answer on half an hour, those were armed and we couldn't, uh, they weren't no, available. Is that no, right? No, my, my point was within half an hour after 8.30 last night. And I night. mean Russell's statement. He doesn't, uh, Russell in the fact said this morning, and they've been, they've been repeating it twice on TV and yeah. a half a dozen times on radio since 5.30. Yeah. I've been listening to it. I started to call you at 7. I said, well, now he'll be late five minutes, and that'll embarrass him. <laughs> but he's been here seven years, and I've never missed him, and I don't want to take any I chances on it. at 5 after 7 this morning. <laughs> Uh, but Russell said that what he could not understand, that from the time the man got in trouble yeah. until he, he was towed in, there was two hours, that he did ask for help, we didn't respond, although we had planes in a half an hour from him. Now, as I understand it, the planes that we had close by, South Korea, uh, were loaded and couldn't be unloaded in time. That's is that a exactly correct that statement? Absolutely correct. Now, second, the man never did ask for help. You're is that a correct right. statement? That's correct. Now, third, uh, do you have any, what's your speculation on what happened to Mr. Him? President, I honestly don't know, and, and uh, I called Nick this morning and later Walt and said, I think we need a Cuban Missile Crisis sure. approach to this, and God damn, we ought to get locked in a room, and you ought to keep us there, and insist we stay there until we come up with answers to three questions. What was the Korean objective? Why did they do it? Secondly, what are they going to do now? Blackmail us, uh, let it go, you know, what, what, and thirdly, what should we do now? And there are a whole series of things we've thought of here, uh, quarantine them, steal one of their ships, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But we just have got to act quickly. I don't think we can let the day go by before reporting to you our at least tentative views on those three questions. I told Walt that I thought we ought to have done that beginning 2 o'clock night four last well, and yesterday I and then today right. too. <laughs> you know, I just hope that they will as quickly as you can. I don't want to get in it and confuse it, but I'm ready at any we're time. Meeting, we're, any meeting at, we're meeting at 1030 this morning. We'll have Dick Helms, Buzz Wheeler, uh, Nick, uh, Paul Nitza, Paul Warnicke, Walt, Sam right. Berger. If Clifford's right. got any time, I'd call him in there sure. because he'll be trying to, he ought to learn it. Sure. Because it's going to be heavy. Okay. Right. I'll call. Thank you. I'll call.